ITEFF and THF and THS701. Um, yes, it's in 2024, and I'm saying welcome um, to our English methodology course for this year. This is going to be for semester one, and I am Marcel Heron. Um, this is my welcome and my introduction to you. Um, from this little um, introduction, there's going to be a little Zoom quiz for you um, to try that out. But I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you so we get on with this little introduction um, and help you get to know what's going to happen during this course. So I'm just going to share my screen now with you and get my PowerPoint up and running. There we go. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of me like this this year. I'm going through my PowerPoints, my presentations, and sharing these all on Canvas with you so you can watch in your own time or live as well if it's our face-to-face -face Zoom or Teams session as well. So here it is, um, this, the, my cover shot. Um, welcome and introduction to March 2024, and especially to TFF, that is your course code. Um, that is Teaching English for First Additional Language, um, FET, the TH is Home Language, FET, and the THS is SP for Home Language. So these course codes are very, very important. So I want you please to put them in your memory because whenever you email me, please start your subject line with your course code. Okay, if you're still not sure what they are, please email me and I can chat to you about that. So welcome to 2024. Let's hope it's going to be a good semester. And um, yes, the whole idea is sometimes that we need to make our classes a bit fun, especially when it comes to English, because with teaching English, it can always be fun and exciting. So this is some information about me. This is all you need to know, really. Um, yes, my email address, which is marcelh at stardio.ac.za. I'm always available in my mailbox and you can always contact me there. So although I might have been a classroom close to you, I am accessible through my email. And I love teaching English. I've been teaching English for a long time, lecturing in English. I've been in the classroom for ages in FET classroom and higher education classrooms. I think teaching English is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I hope you feel as excited as these students with the contemplation of learning how to teach English, the methodologies and the theories, um, and then facing those wonderful students in your classrooms as well with your knowledge as the most amazing English teacher. So let's come back to sending emails to me, because this is going to be the way you're going to communicate with me most of the time. Um, as I said, I'm always available, and I try and get back to my students as soon as possible. But let's try and make this process quite easy. I've got about 300 students, um, all taking three different courses. So sometimes I'm, I'm not too sure who you are if you don't tell me in your subject line what your course code is. So there's my first point. Um, please write your course code in the subject line, that's more important than anything else. Um, you can write a word after that, like SS1 submissions or query about course code. Um, I will understand then. So we start the email like that with TFF701 or THF701 or THS701. Then you can write something else if you want to, like TFF701, SS1 submission. SS just stands for your first assignment code. So you've got three codes, SS1, SS2, and SS3. And please use your registered name. Um, I think a lot of you have got different names that you quite like. Um, I often search for you using your name or your surname. So please have the legitimate registered surname when you email me so I can actually find you um, whether it be on grade book or whether it's on a list um, if you give me um, your pseudonym or your nickname I might not be able to find you and then it just takes longer to get back to you so please use your start your email address I know a lot of you have got gmail addresses and other addresses but I will always email you through your start your email address and that means you must also check your start your email don't rely on your Gmail or your Yahoo addresses um, or even on um, Canvas addresses. This is where if I got an official notice to go to your email, I'll use your Stardio email address. If you're not sure what your Stardio email address, I, I advise you go to QDesk. QDesk, um, I'm sure you've all been given this. It suggests you go to if you've got any query and they will help you sort that out. Okay, then you in your actual body, then you can refer to any specific information. Don't make it long. Um, don't make it too cryptic so that I can actually understand what you're talking about. Um, and I also like you to keep the thread of the, the communication. Don't start a new 
email every time because I might not know, I might not remember the context of your email. And what I do then is I go down into your previous emails to get an understanding of what you maybe are talking about because I have forgotten or I can't remember what's been your initial request. So let's just keep the threads going so I can always go down and keep the whole conversation together. If you're not too sure what I'm talking about, about the thread, please get back to me. Otherwise, it, I go a bit mad because it takes such a long time to get back to all the queries. Because as I said, this is our communication strategy, how we interact with each other is going to be through email. And this is how we can chat about things. Let's make it easy as possible for both of us. Yes, just as an example, um, this goes back right to 2023. It's the start of the year. Um, what it might look like when it comes into my mailbox. If you look at the top there, it's TFS702 and THF72 assignment three mark. So I'm querying about the previous semester's mark. So I can see straight away that's his subject line. Good morning, Marcel. You can address me as ma'am, whatever you want to. Um, the reason why you're sending the actual email, so I actually know why you are. And then just to sign off with your legitimate name, your registered name, so know who you are. Just remember the structure of the email is so important because as English teachers, you're going to teach the structure of the, the email. Please let them have a salutation and ending um, a content um, sentence where you give the main point of your email just to cause ease when someone reads an email. Okay. And if this doesn't make sense to you, please get back to me. Right, what about me? Um, as you can see, I'm surrounded by the ocean. I love the ocean um, because I live in Abeja. That's XPE, if you're not too sure. You can see the sea all around me. Um, I used to work at, well, I'm still a research associate at Nelson Mandela University. Um, that's right at the bottom of South Africa. If you can see there where the PE of Abeja is, um, between Cape Town and Durban, south of Gauteng. Yes, I'm getting closer to it. You can see we're very close to the sea. Um, the university is about 200 meters from the sea. I'm very close there, as you can see on this map as well. And we're right near the um, a, a nature reserve, where it all is. I live in Summer Strand, which is quite close to the university as well. And we teach you, students from all over the world and all over the country as well. So I've got to know different faculties, from engineering to arts to um, fine art students who we taught communication studies to at Nelson Mandela University. Um, from there, I went on to the UAE and I taught in a place called Sharjah. I don't know, it's one of the Emirates. Um, there we go in a bit closer. There's the Arabian Sea. There is um, Emirates of um, the UAE um, with Dubai, Sharjah, Abu Dhabi. I'm sure you've heard of those. Um, but I was at the Skyline University College um, in Sharjah which was a business um, administration college teaching MBAs and academic English and all those good things, English composition. Yeah, we're coming down into where I was in University City, very beautiful place. And there's the actual Skyline University College where I taught for two years. And those are my colleagues and heads of departments and all the important people. And this was the foyer of the university. And you can see I was in, at the, on the right hand side teaching English there as well. From there, I went to higher colleges of technology in Russell Khaimah, which is another emirate in the, in the UAE, where I was very happy. Um, we taught at the, the men's and the women's campuses. And there are a lot of my engineering students. And we just did a whole project on cleaning up and writing a report about um, conservation there. Um, and those are my girls, my beautiful um, black girls at the women's campus, where they were busy writing a test. You can see there, their laptops are all out. And that's when I left in 2019 to come back to South Africa. And yes, I ended up at Stadio in um, 2020. We started the PGCE program was just launched in 2020. And we had a get, we get together at the, um, I think it's the, the Pretoria um, branch of um, Stadio, um, not Musgrave, I think that's the Durban one. Um, but there we are, I think it's now Centurion where we are based, um, which is the big um, campus for the university. And there are, and right at the back, you might recognize some of the other PGC lecturers that you will come across. There to the right, left of me is um, our Professor Pat Bean, who is the Executive Dean of the faculty and all the important people that I teach with now. And this was a workshop we had last year, all the colleagues from Port Elizabeth that were there. And this was also a workshop we had last year in Centurion. Um, 
learning how to teach. Um, so there we are having fun as well. So how are you feeling at this point as you start your new academic program in your PGCE? I'm sure there are many emotions that come to mind. Hopefully they're in this middle section, which means that you're quite happy and contented. I'm not angry, worried, bored, anxious, um, surprised, shy, frustrated, whatever those things might be. But what I've got for you in week one, when you go on to quick links in Canvas, I'll show you those now. Uh, we're going to do a little, you're going to let me know how you're feeling. So you're going to go on to the Mentimeter on Canvas. Um, the links are on week one. Um, I'll show you later what that looks like. You just click on that and you write two, I think it's one word or two words that I've asked you to write down, which really describes how you're feeling this point. And I will share this with everybody later in one of my lectures to show you what everybody's feeling, um, whether it is elated or very frustrated or very confused or very anxious. Okay, let's get to the prescribed books. Um, this is your new prescribed book, this 2019 book from Bonneville and Evans. Um, in 2019, they did this book. It's a, a new prescribed book, which was Ferrera last year and the previous years, which is a 2009 edition. So this is a much more up-to-date version of what we want in the classroom. It's got also from the um, NCS. Um, the CAPS document is also involved in this, which is so important. Um, for our first week one lecture, we're going to be focusing on chapter one, and then you can see the pages. The recommended reading will always be Ferreira. We're using her a bit. Um, our CAPS document, which I will upload on Canvas as well. Um, there's Ferreira, Teaching Language. And the last one, which I really recommend, is Clean, um, Teaching Strategies for Quality Teaching and Learning, um, which has got wonderful um, chapter one on um, the CAPS document. And also, I think it's chapter 15 or 17 on assessment, which I really recommend. This is a text you can use for all specializations. It doesn't just have to be English. It can be for maths or geography or history or whatever you're, you're using as your specialization is relevant there for all the, the practices that they, they stress in this edition. Right, so there you can see the CAPS document, which I will upload. Teaching English, which is Ferreira, the previous recommended book. Um, and then there's Roy Clean, which I'll also recommend as well. And finally, I find the Bolton Evans, which is our new prescribed text as well. Okay. So let's just look at um, our semester one units. There are three units in the semester. Um, the first unit, which takes about three or four weeks, um, we can look at language teaching principles. Um, for the first additional language students, we can also look at language acquisition theories, because second language acquisition theories and understandings are so important for you. Um, we've got different teaching methodologies, text-based, communicative um, language teaching, which are the type of methodologies we like to use in the classroom when we teach English. And we're also going to look at the CAPS document. Okay. Um, we then go on to Unit 2, which focuses on communicative language teaching, CLT teaching approaches, text-based approaches, as well as speaking and listening, and then lesson plan design. Um, let's go switch that off. Let's go on to you. You can see those scam things that come through. So that's listening and or not listening and speaking as well. So we'll focus that on, on that in unit two. And unit three, focus on reading, looking at different genres from literature to visual literacy to critical language awareness um, to poetry. All of that will happen in unit three, um, the reading part, which is quite important too. Right, so this is um, the PGCE, the distance learning model that we're going to focus on. Um, so we will deliver the whole program using this distance learning approach, the DL approach. So do you all understand what that means? Maybe not. Um, so exactly what is this distance learning approach? You can see there is a little link there at the bottom. This will be in the PowerPoint that I will be uploading. So what is DL learning? Okay, it's an online style of learning. Some of you may have come across this. I've seen a lot of transcripts of students that have studied at UNISA. So you possibly are quite aware of how you study for distance learning. Um, obviously it's not face-to-face. -face. This is the only face-to-face -face we will come to. We've seen my little picture there on the, on the screen. Um, you're not gonna see your face-to-face -face with your colleagues either, unless you have little study groups that you get together with. Um, you're going to be very independent. You're going to be maybe sitting um, in Gauteng somewhere in Soweto 
or down in Cape Town somewhere, or sometimes I've got students from Greece and Singapore, South America. So you might be sitting there independently trying to study your PGCE. So it's all online and you need to be engaged on this online platform. You can't be removed or isolated. You've actually got to interact very actively with Canvas and with me online. It's all online. We're not going to be face to face. You can't come to my classroom or to my office. So we're going to rely a lot on a study guide, which we have put together. Um, I'm sure they'll let you know when it's available. I know it's going through the editor at the moment, and I'm sure it'll be published for our start of term. It goes very well with our Canvas pages, which I'm going to show you just now, where we interact as well with Canvas. There's also going to be the online sessions. Um, this is when it's face to face with either through Zoom or Teams, and um, where I will be having an online session with you where you can interact and participate and chat and ask questions. There's also announcements that have been sent out. I have sent out the opening and welcome announcement, but periodically through the term, I will be sending out announcements. Um, obviously, our email form is a very active interaction mode that we have as well. So there you are, independent, <laughs> not face-to-face, -face, working online, engaged, using Canvas, your study guides, the recordings with your headsets on, relying on emails to get back to me. Okay, so first of all, you're going to go onto the portal to log in. This is getting to Canvas. I will show you this live just now. Um, I also log on in exactly the same way. And then you will... Then go to TEFF, so this is 701 or THF 701 or THS. And this is what it looks like on the student interface that you can see the homepage assignments, the chats, the discussions, the grades, quizzes, and so on. We all come like that on the left. Plus you can see meet your, meet your lecturer about this model, key dates and support. You should be able to see this now already. Um, and those are things you can just check out. There you go, there's key dates. And um, once you click on week one, you'll get the this welcome and introduction video will be uploaded there. Um, and also I'm going to be also uploading principles of language teaching and learning, which is the first official lecture for this for this unit. And then you can see the dates as well. Um, I'm going to put little dates in here where it shows you that this will not be published before that date. So this one will be published on the 18th of March. This one will be published on the 25th of March. Um, hopefully today I'll be publishing the 12th of March um, section. So you can go into week one. Um, I'm actually just going to take you in now. So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to do a new share going actually on to the, the site. Hope you can all see this now. So I've actually gone live onto Canvas here, and you can see there's all the things I was showing. This purple around me shows me that I'm actually in, I'm in your your um the student view. So if I look here, I'm just going to scroll up a bit. This was all I was talking about. There's your English language home language FET. This is a THF um homepage I've landed on. And um, there's meet your lecturer about this module, key dates, support, and question and answer. So if I click on meet your lecturer, you'll see something about me here um, and who I am, where you can contact me. Um, there's my email address. So if you're not sure where to find me, that's where you go. I'm going back to the home page again. So if you want to look at the key dates, um, that's what you'll see, all the most important dates. It's got all the week one um, topics the dates. Um, it's also got the assignments that are due and the different dates. Um, this is for THF, there's SS1, it's a CLT case study, and it's actually also um, a reflection that you'll have to add. SS2 is the lesson plan design, SS3 is design and genre-based workshop, and there are the dates, and there are all the other dates. So that's where you need all the dates from. If you click on Quick Links 1 now, because I haven't published it, so I'll show you what happens now. I click on that's when I click on week one, you're going to see something that looks like this. Access denied. That's because it's not published. So if ever you go onto something like this and you see access denied, um, you know it hasn't been published. If it should have been published, please get back to me and I can just make sure it is published at that point. All right. 
So I'm going to just have show you something else here. If you go and look in assignments, you'll also see no assignment groups have been found yet. That's because I haven't yet published um, week one. Once I do that, you'll see the SS1 assignment appearing here, plus the week one little um, quiz I've given you, which is based on the first lecture that I will present um, as a recording and paste it or upload it onto week one links as well. So I'm just going to go out of this. I'm going to stop my share here and I'm going to go back to sharing on my PowerPoint. There we go. All right. So that's how we got you saw the pages live now. So I'm going to go on with this now. If I can. There we go. So what does this mean for the TFF and THF and S courses, that fact that it's distance learning and you're going to have to use Canvas to do that? Um, this means you can have three different kinds of delivery methods through the online program. You can have the recordings, which are online links. This welcome and introduction is going to be an online link, which you can go listen to me on Canvas. You also need to get the Zoom or Teams face-to-face -face class, which is online and live. You can join us. I think we're starting at 6 and ending at 9. I think those are the times. I think most of mine are about 6 or 6.30. I'm not too sure. There's only three in the semester where you've got a chance to come and interact with me and chat and ask questions. So please make sure you set that 45 minutes aside from 6 for quarter to 7. Um, you can have dinner afterwards and then come and chat and be face to face with me as we go through that week's program. Also, there's online tasks. Um, most weeks I will be putting a multiple choice type quiz, which is not for marks, um, just for you to revise. You will have a lecture like this, and then there will be like a little quiz about it, just for your own good to go through what was actually spoken about if you want to do it. Um, it doesn't mean anything, but I'll be seeing who does things like that. Um, so I'll be able to watch what, I'll be able to mirror you and watch what you are doing. Okay, there's an example of the type of quiz. When you can click on a week one on quick links, you'll see that this is what you're going to see, the SS1 CLT case study and reflection. Um, and there's your submission date, the 9th of April. And this is your week one language teaching principles, which is going to be my first recording um, as a, the content of SS1. And there's a short little 10, 10 mark quiz on that multiple choice, which is not for official marks, but just for you to go see what you remembered or what you want to do. It's basically a fun quiz, I would say. So you will see this once you go on to Quick Links 1, and this is what it looks like. You'll just click on that link and it'll take you to the quiz. If you do that and you cannot get through, please get back to me because I'll go and check the links as well. For anything that you can't get through to, please get back to me and I can check the links. All right, so there's your language teaching principles. So there will be recorded lectures from this as you're watching to me at the moment, it'll be recorded. And this is the input and the course content. It'll be videos, there'll be readings as well, there'll be online activities. Also with the SS1, SS2 and SS3, I give you a recording where I just chat about the actual assignment. Um, you're also welcome to get back to me about that. This to cover all the gaps and things you might not be sure of and maybe to iron out a few confusions that you might have about what you're supposed to do. So who does this? <laughs> who comes onto Canvas? You do. Okay, and you do it independently. There's no big group who does it. Let's get together as a group and then you can do it that way. When you do this, well, you do it on Canvas, that is your platform, but you can do it from anywhere. So you can do it from a college, from your home, from your car. Some students do that. Or Starbucks, okay. Um, there we go. You can do it at your local um, coffee shop. And when can you do it? You can do it any time, day or night, 24-7. It's available for you to work on. Okay, so that's the beauty of recorded lectures. It's always available and you can get you can access them wherever you are, whether it's in the mall or in the bath or in your car or at home. Right, so this is your welcome to um, Teaching English TF if they again, 701. And this is what you'll see when you go in view if you click on quick links one when i open this up for you for publication there you'll see this recording um week one introduction how are you feeling um what is your welcome from me will be there as well okay so you'll see that as well you'll also see all these little um, activities that i've got for you on week one quick links one um how are you feeling at the start of pgce 2024 and i told you about that just click on that link over here 
it'll take you through to it. Then you also Kahoot quiz. How well did you listen to this recording? And there it is, is the Kahoot quiz. Um, it's a fun quiz. I won't even know you who you are. Use a pseudonym. And um, the top 10 I'll make available to everybody else. It goes on timing, how quickly you can answer, um, and how quickly you move on to the next correct answer as well. And then the final thing for week one is that there's what we call an answer garden um, link there, which is an informal survey. And this is list five key elements to analyze it in uh, advertisement. Yours is not that. I think it's two things on how you would study vocab. So just check very carefully what that link asks you to do and just write those two things down. And then again, I'll be able to show everyone what everybody else was answering. And then there's also a whole thing on what makes a great teacher, which also comes into our week one lecture, which I'll talk about um, how can you be the best English teacher available. So do I have to listen to these recorded lessons on Canvas? Must I do this? This might be your question. And I'm saying, yes, please do listen to your recordings. Um, you need this lecture information um, to use in your online activities, so those little quick um, 10 mark um, multiple choice questions, and to complete all your assignments, you actually have to watch them. I had one student who said to me, no, no, they don't, or he or she doesn't actually watch it, she just gets her friend or his friend to tell him about it. But you actually miss a whole lot of rich information if you don't actually go onto the Canvas online activities and actually work through those recordings. This is how we communicate. Yeah, if you don't do this, <laughs> um, you will not be able to complete your tasks, unfortunately, and your online activities effectively, as well as your assignments. Um, please um, interact and become engaged with Canvas and all the activities that are there. There's your two recordings that you'll have this week. The first one is the introduction and welcome. And the second one is the teaching principles, um, teaching methodologies. Um, that you're going to have, which is your first content um, lecture or recording, along with the, the um, multiple choice questions, your little quiz, which goes along on that material. Okay, there they are. So you have your Zooms, the face-to-face. -face. Remember I said there's only three each semester, so they're quite important. Um, they are scheduled from 6, 6 p.m. three times, I think. It's not next week, but the following week. That would be the week of March, the, um, I think it's about the, third week in March, so that's about the 15th or 16th, I think it is. So no more formal lectures, that's yay, you don't have to do that. Um, you will access the course information and course from your recordings and the Zoom or Teams FTF class. Um, so you get all your information from that. So the Zoom and Teams face-to-face -face class are really important, especially when it comes to maybe wanting to chat about SS1 or SS2 or SS3, you can ask questions, get information from me there as well. So no more formal lectures, isn't that wonderful? Using Zoom, um, I think it's gonna be Teams, and it's also gonna be a consultation time where you'll have a Teams link to me as well when you want to ask informal questions, maybe I think it's gonna be one hour a week that I will be available online for you. So you need to practice, you need to apply and extend. So all of these are important for you to practice what we are talking about in the classroom, to apply all the methodologies and to extend your understanding. No more blah, blah, blah. Your lecture is boring. You're talking to you online uh, or in class. We'll be talking to you online instead. Um, and that's where you'll see me much like that. Here I am in the corner. And so it's quite clear, nice. You can just switch me off when you feel like it or take a rest. Um, this was week three and it was communicative language teaching for my classes as well. So there'll be some online tasks like multiple, multiple choice questions and some what we call Moodle activities. Um, so they're going to be regular online tasks. Um, at the end of every week, I'm, I will upload some kind of little multiple choice questions that you can answer about the tasks and other activities on Canvas. Um, why do we do this? <laughs> um, because it just extends what the recordings are saying or what the Zoom face-to-face -face are saying. So it gives you some more insight into the content of what we're going through. So you're requested to complete these before assessments. So if there are recordings or multiple choice questions, just go through them. They help you to understand what's, re what's required actually in our assessments. And to also complete these online tasks because they give you some course revision all the time as well. As teachers, you should know that. So where are they all? They're all on Canvas. Yes, go to your quick links, one, two, three, four. And anywhere where you've got internet access, it's going to be available to you. Okay, so Wi-Fi is very important here. Yeah. 
When can you do it? Ah, oh, that's the beauty of this course is that you can do it anytime. Okay, so time is your not your master. You are the master of time. You can do it anytime. So how will distance learning help me? Okay, it's more flexible, which is quite nice. You can learn in the day or you can learn in the night, whenever you want to, or both day and night. Um, how you do your lesson, you can do all the classes or all the work at once, or you can break it up. If you're tired of listening to me, you can switch me off. That's quite nice. Um, so there's less physical class hours at school. So you only have the Zoom face-to-face -face three times. So there's the only real face-to-face -face type of contact you're going to have. Everything else is going to be recorded and uploaded like this one will be. You'll have lots of online activities which you can work through. And you can choose all the time where and when you're actually going to do that. But that means you must be quite responsible. So this makes you a better graduate um, for the workplace because you are independent. You can work independently. You are working very actively on your own steam. And you become very responsible because you have to do this all yourself. And that means success. Here we are. There's a successful student doing all the work he should be doing, listening to his online recordings, checking out Canvas um, quick links, and doing his online and uh, multiple choice questions. So makes you very successful and independent. Yeah. So are distance learning courses easier? I think those of you that have studied maybe Janisa might say definitely not. Okay. But some questions might be asked: Is it easier? No, I don't think it is, but they are very different. Um, it's very different teaching distance learning online than it is to teaching face-to-face -face where you can see your teacher and talk to her. And I know it's very, very different for me to lecture this way. Um, instead of being having my students in front of me and seeing that when they are concentrating or not concentrating, to see when they are confused or not confused. I rely on you telling me those questions um, with, your, with your queries and your confusion in your emails. So you still have the same course learning outcomes and assessments if you're working contact, but for six success on distance learning, you need to be responsible. So you can't make excuses for everything that's happening. You've actually got to take ownership of the way you are using your time management, the way you are interacting, the way you are approaching your course. If there's a submission date, it doesn't disappear, it becomes a submission date, and at midnight it closes, um, you will be responsible enough to submit your assignment on time. You can't come the next day and say to the teacher, here it is. So complete the online activities, um, participate in the Zooms or the team sessions, the face-to-face, -face, so I can get to know you. And actively, that means you've got to take responsibility for that. If you're not understanding, don't rely on the WhatsApp group because often you get <laughs> misinformation. Okay, please come back to me if you're confused about something. Actively do that. Um, look for online support. Contact me. Check the Canvas pages. Check the key dates. There are submission dates. Um, you will see this on your Canvas page, but if you never look at your Canvas pages, you will never know what is going on. Okay, and you might be surprised how much work has actually happened by the time you get to that. I'm actually independent, which is quite nice. I think you can do things in your own time, manage your own time, which is quite nice. You can check your emails and notifications from your lecturers um, independently. You're going to do that. I'm not going to tell you to do it because you will not see me in the classroom or in the office. You can see me online um, in this kind of setup. So this was a little um, survey monkey I did uh, just most years and see what they're saying. Um, this is the question was when when do you actually do your work um, on on Canvas? And they said anytime convenient to me. So most students say 84% of them say they do their work at any time convenient to me. So they're not actually coming into the actual daytime or nighttime hours they're doing when they can do it, might be weekends. But interestingly, um, most of them do it during the week. 38% said they do it during the week, and it was only 23% of them that said they do it on weekends. Um, it's And there's a question here that says, um, when you're driving, at least someone said, no one said they were doing it while they were driving. So most of the time they're going to do it at their own convenience and it seems like most people do it during the week. So your typical week might look like this. Um, the orange means it's a recording that I'm going to upload like it'll happen next week. It'll be the principles of language teaching and learning um, that's going to be uploaded. Um, it could be a green, which just means it's our face-to-face. -face. You can see there are three face-to-face. -face. Go back and look at this little table. 
The first one will be in the week of 22nd of March to the 3rd of March, where we're going to look at the um, curriculum documents for CAPS. And then with this one on the 6th, again, we are going to look at theories of reading. Okay, so all of these are scheduled and finally being finished off with face to face and there's visual literacy. But the blue is the Moodle, what we call the Moodle one, where it's just there's no actual lecture that week, but you're going to have an activity which you have to complete. And then I think that's an assessment that you're going to be looking at, or it might be the short story. Right, what about assessments? Okay, you can see there are going to be three assessments. Assignment one is 30% of your weighting. Um, assignment two is 35% and assignment three is 35. Please note that if you don't submit one of these assignments, you're just not going to pass because you can't just make up 30% missing marks. Please submit your assignments. Um, um, there are chances for second opportunity assessments. Um, if you've had a death in the family or if you've been <coughs> if you've been in hospital um, or something else has happened, it's not going to be for the local outage, please. So just please work around outages and having no electricity. Um, if you know there's going to be an outage that night, please try and get your assignment in earlier. So those are things you're going to have to manage as well. Okay. Right. So there, that's your assignments. Contributes 100% of your mark. Um, so what are the assessments you might ask in shock? Um, yeah, I've tried to put them together. So is this one, which is around unit one, it's a communicative language teaching case study, which you're going to read 10 minutes of a case study, and then write a little reflection, which is going to count 30% of your mark. There are two dates, as you can see, um, the 9th and the 11th of April. The 9th is for this SP class, my THS, they submit on the 9th, and the FETs will submit on the 11th. That means because if you are doing FET and SP, you don't have two submissions on the same day, which causes a lot of pressure. And over the years, we've realized we've got to split the two submission dates. Okay, don't get them mixed up. The later date is all for FETs. You can see the same thing happens for SS2, Unit 2. It's week 8. It's the 3rd and the 5th of May. It's just after workers' day. So you have lots of time to work on your assignments. Also 35%. And the last one is week 11, where we have to have all the assessments completed by the 24th of May. So the FETs will submit on the 24th of May. We can't have any signs before the 9th of April. So that's why first assessment goes in on the 9th of April, with students starting their classes on the 12th of March, which is next week. Okay, so don't forget that's SS1. So have you been listening <laughs> to me drone on? So you can access the Kahoot quiz um, on Canvas to find out how well you've been listening to this overview of what's happening. Um, have you listened? You go to the Kahoot link on week one, um, and then it's an introduction fun quiz, 10 little multiple choice questions on what I've been talking about. And you've got until the 25th of March to complete the fun quiz. Um, it's not for marks. I wouldn't even know who you are, but it'll give you an indication of how many students have done it and um, what to actually know after listening to this introduction um, and welcome. So that's all for me for now. Best wishes for semester one. I'm now going to upload this um, onto Canvas One and I will publish it. And later this week, um, I will be uploading the recording for language principles for teaching English um, on week one Canvas as well. So you'll be able to see everything after I've uploaded this. I'll also put this PowerPoint up so you can go back and refer to it. Any questions, anything you're confused about, anything that's given you a problem, please email me and I'll see what I can do to help. So thank you for everything and looking forward to being your PTCE online lecturer this semester and hope you're going to enjoy the course as well. So take care, hope you're not feeling anxious and hope you're feeling excited about the course this semester. Take care. Bye for now.